Hey, this is Johannes Tyrannis speaking to you. And in this video, I want to go over a thought experiment about a hypothetical future. You're watching drone footage that I shot over Sweden to show you what that country mostly looks like. Apart from the three main urban centers, Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malmö, Sweden is largely a pine tree forest littered with lakes. In fact, Sweden has the most number of lakes of any country in Europe. Sweden isn't the only place like this. Indeed, much of Norway and much of Finland and Northwest Russia are also like that. These territories are woodlands and sparsely populated at that. Moreover, this massive woodland of Northwest Eurasia is about the size of the rest of Europe. That means if temperatures were to rise just a little, just a few degrees Celsius on average, these undeveloped forest lands could provide the perfect fertile soil for doing agriculture or pastoralism someday. In a warmer climate, these lands could feed tens of millions, if not a hundred million Europeans seeking refuge from the multicultural dystopia presently unfolding in our cities further south. Why do I care? Why does this matter to me? Well. In another video, I had discussed what might happen if climate change were to lead to a drop in temperatures. If Europe were to freeze over, in that case, at least 100 million Europeans would have to leave the continent. The cost of fuel and clothing would rise exponentially, basic households would default on their heating costs, and our migrant friends from the tropics and the deserts might find Europe too cold to inhabit and avoid coming here altogether. But we can't predict the future. It's best to prepare for several logical outcomes. What should we do, for example, if climate alarmists turn out to be right and the temperatures in Europe do start to rise rapidly? Personally, I haven't quite bought into the rising temperature scare peddled by the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, though it seems that the IPCC and the World Economic Forum prefer this scenario and they may be working in secret to make it happen rather than to having to wait for it. If rising temperatures were to hit Europe, by that time many parts of northern Africa and the Arab Peninsula will already have become too hot to inhabit. The present Islamic crescent surrounding the European continent may turn into a scorched earth, and hundreds of millions of desert peoples will pursue passage to Europe. They have nowhere else to go. This would be the nightmare scenario for us. A nation like France, for example, could see a majority African population by the year 2040. At the same time, France's native population will still be failing to raise families. Their numbers will dwindle, and such a minority fate may hit all of West Europeans. Where does that leave us? Our cities could be overflowing with migrants, and arguably many already have. Southern Europe, or anything south of the rivers Rhine and Danube, could become indistinguishable from Central Africa, whereas Northern Europe will be flooded by Turkic and Arab peoples. All of Europe, then, becomes Islamic, barring a few rural Christian enclaves here and there staking out the apocalypse. Should we do nothing and wait for better times ahead? As our peoples wither away in urban ghettos and rural shanty towns, disowned, unhappy, and stripped of political power? Something like this has happened before, and we should learn from the ordeal. When the Soviet communists decided to disown the kulaks, a class of farmers who managed to employ a small number of helping hands, many of these kulak families were then banished and sent to live in the Siberian woodlands often without any possessions whatsoever, but the clothes they were wearing. They were sent to die there, though that's not what happened. Not only did many banished groups of kulaks survive in what was supposed to be nature's death row, some new settlements even thrived. That means there is a way out for us if demographic catastrophe were to hit us, in case of a massive replacement of Europeans with immigrants coming from Arab and African nations, rising temperatures will change the equation in our benefit. For if temperatures rise, might we relocate our peoples to the yet unpopulated woodlands of northwestern Eurasia? I understand it sounds borderline ludicrous for white Europeans 
to ask Russia, Sweden, and Finland for asylum in their forests, and it won't have to happen anytime soon. In the worst case scenario, however, this may be the best option left for Europeans, namely to pursue our strategic relocation. We should only do this, of course, as a strategy of last resorts, only if every other attempt at defending our homelands has already failed. After all, we need to know what to do if catastrophe hits. We need to know our options, and the woodlands of northwest Eurasia offer us such an alternative future. Imagine, for example, that our communist traitors, who are already in charge of our economies and of our banking systems, decide to rob the white middle class's pension funds. And then, will they also rob our savings accounts for the sake of equality? Own nothing and be happy. To our enemies, perhaps we are the cash cows, the treasure chest used to fund the communist utopia. They will use the West's pension monies to finalize our great replacement as the alleged repayment for the colonial age, resulting in the Islamization of Europe, the legalization of child marriages, the segregation of men and women in public spaces, all the while still pushing for the LGBT circus. Western elites will go along with it because it means they get to buy a new market of 2-3 to three billion young people still looking to get their latest iPhones. And as I said, it seems that the World Economic Forum is also betting on this scenario, meaning communists may be planning to take away our savings, disown us, and drive us into camps to die. European people who still love freedom will then have to abandon ship. Rising temperatures would make the woodlands of northwestern Eurasia habitable. It will be possible for us to clear sections of the forest to grow crops or to create pastures for cattle. And the fertile lands should be able to sustain a population on the level of the mid-19th century, which means this vast woodland could comfortably feed and house up to 50 million northern Europeans using wood as fuels and horses as the means of transportation. In the long run, we may even witness a revival of our civilization. In the short term, however, arriving in a territory previously unpopulated, on lands never developed before, and without any pre-existing infrastructure, we will be thrown back to the times of the early settlers of Europe. But we will also bring with us the knowledge, the tools, and the skills of the modern age to give ourselves a head start. I want to stress that I personally hope this scenario does not play out. I hope that Europe's temperatures will rather drop and so naturally curb any further immigration from the Islamic and African regions into Europe. Still, it's useful for us to imagine what we might have to do if climate changes for the worse. We know that we could strategically relocate a fairly large number of our peoples further north especially young people and families willing to brave the adventure. Whatever happens, I'm sure not only many of us will survive, some of us will thrive and found new nations. <laughs>